Hey guys, it's Cameron. You're watching The Nomadic Nautilus, and I'm coming at you with another beekeeping, bee removal video. It actually ended up happening twice on the same hive because I made a mistake, and I'll talk about that later. But for now, we are at the Treehouse Permaculture Farm on Pine Island, Florida with Jay Reynolds. And his YouTube channel, I'll mention later that he has a channel about all about his farming and everything, and he's got some pretty cool videos out there. His channel is The Chief 762 All right, guys, let's get started. This is Jay Reynolds. Jay Reynolds. He's got a swarm today. We think it came off of a neighboring a hive that just got a little overcrowded because we're in early winter and not typically the, around this time of year that they're going to be doing that. But if they're, the neighbors got a little bit negligent, they might have overcrowded and decided to split. And I don't mean to be mean about the neighbors. They just, they may be excellent beekeepers. The bees just became overpopulated in a potential hive somewhere and they split off. So Jay's swarm has been on this branch for about three days and he didn't tell me how long they'd been there yet. I thought they had just showed up that day, which we'll see why I made a mistake later. Okay, Cameron. Yes. That's the hive that I'd like to use. All right, so we got a little setup here. They're off the ground, nice. Everything looks good. It's got plastic foundation in it. All right, plastic foundation, we're nice and good. Now, Jay says he has plastic foundation. So foundation is what is in between comb. So we've got a piece of honey bee comb here, and it's double-sided, but in between there's a straight layer of wax that leads all across, and then in, from there, the holes open up on both sides that the bees can build off of. I'm gonna actually move this over there and get it underneath them. We'll move all the bees in, we'll just throw the t-shirt on so they don't all start flying away until we get it over here. Okay. And then I'm gonna have to knock one of these plastic foundations out so I can put this queen clip in there okay. once I get her. A queen clip is a type of beekeeping tool used to hold a queen in place in a hive so she can't leave. Cause if she leaves the hive, then the rest of the bees will follow her. Let me go get my camera set up and we'll leave it there and I won't have to touch it while I'm doing this. It's a beautiful farm he's got here. Let's see. Oh, yep, we got a big old ball of bees. Hey sweeties. So somewhere in there is you're gonna have your queen. There we go. Nice and docile right now. It's getting dark, so they're gonna be bedding up for the night. They're not moving, which is nice. Let's just go for our first little handful here. Come on, guys. I'm able to grab bees like this by the handful without them attacking me because this is a very, very new established home. There's not much to protect. But don't ever do this with an established hive because bees will certainly have something to protect whether it be the queen or the home itself and will absolutely attack you. The real key is just being gentle and not being afraid. I mean, I got a hole in this glove right on the tip of my finger. But other than that, the phrase they can smell fear actually genuinely applies to bees. If you're very nervous and you're sweating, you're releasing pheromones that the bees can sense on you to the point where if you're nervous, they're gonna be nervous because you're nervous and they're more likely to sting you. If you're gonna be doing any bee removals or, or swarm captures like this, be very confident. Do, work your way up to it, maybe work with a local beekeeper and get experience doing it and understanding what it's like to get stung and how to avoid that before you do anything like this. I'll tell you right now, I can tell they're not Africanized. And they're, since that, they came probably from that hive, that, that's obvious. Africanized killer bees were bred in 1956, and they're a crossbreed of a British bee and an African bee that is extremely hostile. If you encounter Africanized killer bees, consult an expert and get away immediately. One handful down. Second handful of bees there. And you do your best to not squish any of them. These are all important. And this nest is gonna have your old queen. The, the queen that's been in that box laid, a, laid an egg and a queen comb cell. They gave her royal jelly. They waited till she's mature. 
And then when they were all good to go, the old queen left and left the, the old hive for the new baby. Queen cells look different than regular bee cells. So a regular cell would look like this, it'd have a little egg in it, and eventually it'd get capped, and that's when a bee would hatch out of it. But queen cells are elongated and point downward. When a queen lays an egg in that, they put royal jelly in there, that larvae eats the royal jelly and is able to grow big and strong and become another queen. And that's what makes the difference between a regular bee and a queen. This comb is pure white and super soft. Yeah, fresh. Beeswax is actually bee fat, and it comes out through the uh, sections of their body. They chew it up, and they make their hives out of it. Now, that doesn't mean it's not beneficial in any way, because beeswax has a lot of great uses, including candles and cosmetics and other things like that. But the great thing is, is when beeswax is very, very fresh, it's pure white, but as it ages, it gets darker. This wax, for example, is about a year and a half old. Because it's so dark, you can tell that the bees have been walking all over it with their little feet, and they've been tracking in dirt, and there's been all sorts of weather that got this dirty. So this is older, dirty wax that is part of a comb, but brand new beeswax is gonna be pure white, paper white. Going in. Yeah, they're going in there. Yeah. And then the queen's probably in there already. But I'll be able to tell you if I, if we give it 45 minutes when I get them all off of there and in there and they don't start flying around, she's in there for sure. I'm gonna trim up the branches around it first, just so I can get in at a better angle. And being gentle is the key. So once you get all set, I know this hive is probably straight out of one of those boxes. But you're still gonna need to go and get a, uh, someone come inspect, make sure they're not diseased. And once you do that, you gotta pay a $10 registration fee and you're good. It may seem counterintuitive, but if you have an inspector come out and inspect your beehive and your hive is infested with some sort of disease, it may be um, something that came from mites or other parasites that infect beehives, which are treatable, but if the hive itself is diseased, they have to be exterminated so they don't spread their diseases to other colonies because we are so hurting for bees right now that any chance of other beehives that are healthy getting sick needs to be minimalized as much as possible. Bottom. Let's keep up a big old handful of bees. You can see the finger hole in my glove? They don't care. Oh, there you go. There's the camera. <laughs> you can see the finger hole? They don't care. In this current situation, I was okay with having some exposed skin. My gloves weren't tied to my suit and I had holes in the fingers because A, I was accepting that risk on myself that I was gonna be stung. Bee stings for me aren't typically that bad. I don't react very severely. But also I know that in a swarming state when all the bees have to protect is the queen and they've got a plenty of themselves, it's actually, they're more docile. This is actually one of the most docile states. You'll find them naturally in the environment when there's not a hive to protect. Mm -hmm. 
Now just because they've got wax uh, and comb going doesn't mean at some point they would just decide to chew that all up, hold it for a little while and, and move it somewhere else. So, I mean it's good that you got them going in a box like this if I get the attract in there. Alright, I think it's just about time for me to just cut that burn. What kind of tree is this? That's the Jamaican uh, strawberry tree. Oh, the little red ones that are they're kind of bitter a little bit. I've had those. They're interesting. Hey guys, having a good time? I'm having a great time. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Still need to find a clean now. I'm gonna shut you off because I'm at 12% better. And yes, these suits are exactly as hot as you think they are. So I've cut most of the way through sawing. Where are they at? There they are. They got a little blood fuzzy, but they're doing okay. 90% of them are still on the uh, branch here. So I'm just gonna come in from the bottom now. In my specific circumstance, me cutting this branch with a saw was okay. The bees didn't immediately start freaking out. But other situations or other breeds of bees or whatever time of year it is may change that. If you are unable to cut a branch out like that, I've seen other people where they bag the branch first or they put a box around the bees and then let, try to develop a, a hive from the bees going in and out of the box while it's wrapped around the branch. There's several alternatives that you can do to this, but Mr. Reynolds just wanted those bees in a box and they weren't attacking or freaking out too bad, so I was able to do this. Now you can tell that the branch is getting vibrated here. Oh my gosh, might have been totally in your way when I was doing that. You can tell that the branch is getting vibrated, but because they're all kind of docile, it's a little later in the day. I haven't even used any smoke or anything, but it's a little vibrations, but I'm seeming to tolerate it. Smoke is a resource that beekeepers use to keep bees docile. It interrupts the chemical signals that they're able to give to each other to communicate to get the alarm raised that something's happening to their hive. It also makes them think that they may need to evacuate the hive where they go and gorge on honey. Now this swarm doesn't have any honey yet, but in an established beehive, they all go and gorge themselves on honey to the point where they become docile and relaxed and you're able to work with the hive easier. Alright, the branch is starting to go here, and I'm not going to go all the way through it just yet. Hands on the branch, we're going to grab it, and we're just going to kind of snap it. Hopefully I can do this in a nice, gentle manner. That way we don't... Oh, so we got it. A couple flew off. Here we go. So look at here. That's one giant stick with a bunch of bees on it, I'll tell you what. All right. The thing about this mask is I keep trying to bite my glove to take it off of my mouth, but I can't do that. It doesn't work very well, does it? This will be the messiest part of this whole thing. I'm gonna just shake them all into the box at the same time. You can see we got a bunch down there buzzing the box. That could mean that the queen's down there, but we still got a big tight ball on this thing. So it could mean that they're up here too. And I haven't seen any sign of her yet, but you can see how tightly these guys are balled up. So it's pretty difficult to see. I'm gonna take one more frame out of here. I'm gonna turn it up there. Take these out. I'll take this one out. Give myself plenty of room to knock these guys in. And I'll throw the towel right back over it. Oh, just squished a little girl, I'm sorry. Let's see. Nice and gentle. 
No need to hurt them. They're all buzzing now. Now I'm just gonna give one nice, solid, not too hard knock. Try to shake them off into the box there. All right, got 98% of them in there. Throw the lid back on. I'll just leave this over by the box so they can chew the comb off and then reuse it since they've got a nest here. This is foundation, but they gotta start building some hive. Now, here's where I made my first mistake. I pretty easily could have just removed those frames out of the box and then put that entire stick in there and they would have smelled where their old home used to be inside that box and thought maybe home just moved and stayed with it. I should have done that, but I didn't think of it at the time. Other times you may not have that opportunity. If you remove a swarm from a larger tree or a taller tree, you may not be able to remove the branch with them or fit it inside of a box. But this specific circumstance, because it was available, I should have done that. Next, I'm gonna move it and I don't really need to film that. You can just imagine what it's like to pick this thing up. Putting a couple just drops of lemongrass, just rubbing it in so that it doesn't evaporate or just run off on these frames. And this'll, this'll keep them in there. These are. Lemongrass is a great bee attractant. Look, they're, they're already swarming this little frames that I already rubbed it onto. Something I should have realized, which isn't necessarily a mistake, but it was pretty funny, is after this I went to go clean up my stuff and walked back over to where the hive used to be. Now of course there's a bunch of bees that are really confused saying where's home, and they'll be able to find where the box is with the queen. I still had a bunch of lemongrass oil all over my hands. I should have done it with a rag or maybe just a glove on or something. Because as soon as I walked over there, they were all over me and I had already taken my suit off. So I had to pause and freeze and keep myself calm thinking, why are all these bees immediately around my face and my body? And, and I kind of sat there for a minute and Jay was across the way from me and he kind of noticed that I was pausing really quick and, and a little afraid. And I sat there and I was like, oh wait, the lemongrass. And I just kind of like laughed it off because I knew they wouldn't attack me at that point anymore. And Jay goes, what happened? I said, oh, I was just trying to figure out why they're all buzzing me. <laughs> and then they were all in my face, so I figured it out, everything was okay. Hey. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Hey. Now, this is where the video should end, if I didn't make a second mistake. Because I thought that I had the opportunity to just take the swarm and put them in a box nearby that the queen would think, oh, this is an excellent home. We were just on a branch out in the open in the weather. No, they had already thought in their head that this was an established home, or at least the queen did, because she left the box later on that night, moved back to the branch a little bit lower and reestablished and started building comb again. Jay called me the next day and I went ahead and moved right back out to the farm and they looked exactly like they did in the beginning of this video, just lower on the branch. So from there, I went ahead and just took the whole branch, realizing my mistake from the day before, put it in the box, and the best thing to do to keep bees from moving back to an old spot is to move them further away. We were about 45 yards away from the location where the hive was, and they were able, obviously, to just smell where their home used to be, realize that they got moved or something went wrong, and then move back to that tree. Um, after this, I take that whole branch, I put it in the box, and I seal the box up and actually put it in the back of my car and move it a few miles down the road to another farm. Now, that farmer sent me another video later on, about, about 24 hours later, of the hive. She didn't go into it or anything, but she sent me a video and they were coming in and out and they were using the feeders that we had set up next to the hive. So they had decided, because we can't find our old home, this is our new home. Here's a clip of that. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, I hope you learned something, and please, if you have any questions, comment down below, if you have any suggestions for future videos. Last video that I made, I actually got a suggestion to be more descriptive and, and explain the words that I'm using a little more, so that's why I made a video like this, a more, just, a, a more uh, tutorial video, and then uh, guys, please like, comment, share, 
subscribe. I'll see you later. Decided to split. And I don't mean to be mean about. And I don't mean to be. And I don't mean to be mean about the neighbors. They. <laughs> Recognize bees.